Now releasing all goblins. Nanka! Before we get into today's game, I want to talk about the sponsors for my channel. Card Conduit is the best way to sell your unused magic cards. Whether you've got a box of unsorted bulk, or a complete and alphabetized set, there's a great option for everyone. With the payout averaging 19% better than using any one buy list, and that's after fees are applied, you can rest assured you'll get the best bang for your buck. If you're a skeptic like me, their easy customer servers and detailed reports make the whole interaction transparent and safe. And if you use the affiliate link in the description below, or the promo code MTGMUDSTA, you'll save 10% off their fees. And 401 Games, Canada's one-stop shop for trading cards, board games, and hobby supplies. Not to mention an easy-to-use and great online buy list. And if you use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, your first purchase of MTG Sealed and Singles will be 5% off. And Dragon Shield, the strongest sleeves for your strongest deck. So be sure to use the code MUDSTA or the affiliate link down below to save 5% on your next order. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's patron shoutout goes to Adam. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon. In today's game, Fidix, Marie, and Max have joined me, and Fidix is playing his Mothman deck again. He keeps a Watchful Radstag, Toski Bearer of Secrets, Cathedral Acolyte, Forest, Fetid Pools, Sunken Hollow, and Bygone Marvels. I just gotta go fast, playing my Grease Fang deck, keeping two Plains, two Swamps, Deadly Dispute, Braids Arisen Nightmare, and Solemn Simulacrum. Max is playing his Descana deck, keeping Farseek, Carplusion Forest, Flame Wake Phoenix, Scavenging Ooze, an Actual Forest, Soul Ring, and a Bountiful Promenade. Last but not least, Marie is playing her Delny, keeping Smuggler's Share, Suter Priest, Gary Clone, Three Planes, and a Ganjo, Seat of the Empire. I win the die roll and start us off. I draw, play a Planes, and cast an Esper Sentinel. Felix plays a Tap Path of Ancestry. Marie just has a Planes for turn. Max plays out his Carplusion Forest and taps it for a Colorless for Soul Ring. I play a Swamp and pass. Felix plays an Island and pays 2 for a Cathedral Acolyte. Marie's got a Plains for turn, and she then plays a Searcher Priest and passes. Max's turn hasn't played a Bountiful Promenade, and he then casts Farseek, paying the 1 for my Esper Sentinel. He goes to find a Jetmere's Garden and passes. I draw and play a Swamp. I then cast Braids, taking one from the Priest trigger, and as we move to my end step, don't sacrifice anything. Felix draws and plays an Overflowing Basin. He then casts a Watchful Radstag and passes turn. Marie's got a Plains for turn, and she casts Delny, which as it comes in, gains her two life from the Priest, and she passes to Max. Max plays a Forest, and then plays out Danathan Capuchin, taking two this time from the doubled Searcher Priest triggers. He follows up with a Flame Wake Phoenix, taking another two, and moves to combat. He swings the Phoenix at Marie, dealing two, and then passes to me. I draw, and play a Plains. I cast Solemn to go and find a Swamp, and lose two from the Priest triggers. I then move to my end step, and sacrifice the Solemn to Braids. Marie and Felix take two, and let me draw a card, while Max sacrifices his Flame Wake Phoenix. I draw a total of three cards, one extra one because the Solemn is dying, and I pass turn. Felix's turn has him playing a forest. He then plays the Wise Mothman, giving everyone a rad counter. His watchful ragstag then also evolves, making a copy of itself. Felix then follows up by activating the Cathedral Acolyte, and puts a counter onto the Mothman. He then goes to combat, and swings the original ragstag at Marie, who takes the hit. After that, Felix passes. Marie draws and mills one, and hits a non-land so she loses one and removes her rad counter. She then plays a Plains, and casts Gary Clone, and makes a copy once with Squad, gaining a total of four as they come in, and she passes turn. Max draws, mills a non-land card, loses one, and removes his rad counter. He casts Descana, drawing only one off of it and losing two from the Priest. He then moves to combat. He pays a red to bring back the Phoenix, losing another two, and then swings it and Danatha at Marie, giving them both plus three plus three with the Scanus trigger. Marie chumps the Danatha with her Gary clone, but still takes five in the air, and Max then passes turn. I draw and mill a land, keeping my rad counter. I then play a Plains and cast Sculpting Steel as a copy of Max's Soul Ring. I'm then able to play out Greasefang. I then pass through my phases not using the Greasefang trigger in combat, 
and I sacrifice my Sculpting Seal, aka the most expensive soaring in the game, to Braids. This has everyone taking two, and I draw three cards, and we pass to Felix. Felix draws and mills a land, keeping his rad counter. He plays a Sunken Hollow, and casts Tusky, losing two, and then moving to combat. He swings the Mothman, and Rad Stag at Marie, and Marie blocks the Rad Stag with her Gary Clone, and takes five commander damage. We also get another rad counter from the Mothman attacking, and Felix also gets to draw a card from the Toski trigger after the Mothman connects. Marie's got a planes for turn, and she mills a non-land card to get rid of her rad counter, losing one, and then plays a planes. She then casts Smuggler's Share, and pays the one for the Esper Sentinel. She follows up with Mother of Runes, and passes to Max. Max draws, and mills a land. He then plays Spectator Seating, he casts an Always Watching, and pays the one for the Esper Sentinel. Max then follows up with a Scavenging News, and as it comes in, activates it immediately, exiling my Reaver Titan that's been in my graveyard. Going to combat, Max then swings everything he can at Felix. Felix blocks Descana with Tusky, and chumps Danatho with the Radstag, but still takes 6 in the air. With nothing else, Max passes. I draw, and mill 2 non-land cards to get rid of my Rad Counters. I then play a Swamp, and cast Path to Exile, and target the Scavenging News to at least allow my Grease Fang Trigger to do something, although unfortunately I have no vehicles to bring back. I then go to my end step, and sacrifice the Sentinel to Braid since everyone seems to be paying for it, and everyone declines to sacrifice something, so I just draw 3, and they lose 2. Felix draws, and mills 2 lands. He then plays an Island, and casts Power Fist, which he then moves onto the Mothman. Going to combat, he swings Mothman at Max, and Tusky goes at me. I take the 3, and Max then takes 6, with Felix doubling the plus 1 plus 1 counters on Mothman, and gets to draw 2 cards from the Tusky triggers. In his post-combat main phase, he casts Life from the Loam, returning 3 lands to hand, and passing. Marie draws, milling a non-land, and losing 1. She then plays a Plains, and casts Thought Vessel. She then casts Wilfred Mott, and passes after that. Max draws, and mills a land, and then a non-land, losing at least one of his rad counters, and taking one. He then plays an overwhelming stampede, giving his team plus six plus six and trample, and he goes to combat. He swings out his team at Felix, and after running the numbers, Felix realizes he can't block enough, and dies. In his post-combat main phase, Max then plays Mirren Crusader, and passes his turn. I draw, and mill a non-land to get rid of my last rad counter. I then play my own soul ring, and cast a Cyberman Squadron, and then go to combat. Grease Fang brings back the Knight Paladin, dealing 4 to each of my opponents, and I crew it with Grease Fang. I then swing the Knight Paladin at Max, and the Cyberman Squadron makes it a copy attacking Marie. Max jumps his Knight Paladin with the Flame Wake Phoenix, and Marie takes the hit. After combat, I cast Corrupted Conviction, sacrificing the token to draw two, and then sacrifice the original Knight Paladin to Braids during my end step. This has Marie sacrificing her Thought Vessel, and Max sacrificing his Flame Wake Phoenix, and I pass turn after that. Marie ticks up Wilfred Mott, revealing a Soul's Attendant from the first trigger, and then a Swiftfoot Boots from the second. She then draws, and plays a Maria, which comes in tapped. She then equips her Boots onto Delny, Moving to combat, Marie swings Delny and Wilfred at Max, who can't block them thanks to Delny's ability. After that, Marie passes turn. Max draws and mills a land, keeping his rat counter around. He then plays a Naya Panorama, and then casts Citadel Siege, choosing cons as it comes in. Max then follows up with Sky Terror, and he goes to combat. He puts the Citadel Siege trigger on Danatha, and swings it at me, and Duskana and the Mirror Crusader go at Marie. Danatha and the Mirren Crusader get the pumps, and Marie then activates her Mother of Runes to give the Suture Priest pro white, and blocks the Crusader. I then just take 8 from Danatha, and Max passes. I draw, and play an Urborg, while Max activates and sacrifices Naya Panorama to go find a basic. I then go to combat, and have the Grease Fang trigger bring back Foreboding Steamboat, and then crew it with Grease Fang in response to its trigger. I exile Grease Fang and Braids under it, while Max exiles Sky Terror and Mirren Crusader, and Marie exiles Mother of Ruins and the Suture Priest. I then swing the Steamboat at Max, making a token copy of it that's swinging at Marie, 
and the copy coming in has the Exile trigger as well, which has Danitha, Duskana, Delny, and Soul's Attendant going into Exile as well. Marie and Max then both take 5, and with the Steam Bones connecting, I put the Searcher Priest and Danitha into the graveyards, and make 2 clue tokens. With the Myriad Sacrifice trigger on the stack, I then sacrifice the copy to Deadly Dispute, drawing 2 cards, and everyone then gets their creatures back from the Steamboat copy. And in my post-combat main phase, I crack my clue token, drawing another card, and then play a Talisman of Hierarchy. I follow up on the Orzhov Signet, and then move to my end step. This has me bouncing the Steamboat back to my hand, which gives everyone back their creatures, and Marie gains even more life, and we then move to Marie's turn. Marie reveals Esper Sentinel off of her first Wilfred trigger, and then a Discerning Financer with a second. She then draws her turn, and plays a Plains, and then moves the boots onto the Financer. Going to combat, she swings her creatures out at max for 5 total, and he can't block anything and takes the hit. With nothing else, Marie passes. Max draws, milling yet another land and keeping his rad counter around. He then casts Wilfson, Refined Grizzly, and moves to combat. He brings back the Flame Wake Phoenix and puts the Citadel trigger on the Mirren Crusader. He then swings the Crusader and Descana at me, and the Phoenix and Sky Terror go at Marie. I chump his Crusader with Cyberman Squadron, and Marie can't block the Flyers. We then take our hits, and Max passes. I draw, playing an Ancient Den for turn. I then cast a Ruthless Technomancer, and sacrifice Brave to make 3 treasure tokens. I then sacrifice the treasure to bring back the Cyberman Squadron, and go to combat, bringing back Knight Paladin with Greasefang. I crew it up with Greasefang, and swing it at Max, and make a token copy attacking Marie. My opponents take a total of 8 from the Enter the Battlefield triggers, and Max blocks the Discana to trade. Marie then takes the hit though, and drops a 3. In my second main phase, I then cast Toxic Deluge, putting 5 life into it, and wipe the board. Marie gets her Remaria trigger on her upkeep, bringing back the Suter Priest and drawing. She then plays a Plains for turn, and casts Karmic Guide, which reanimates her Reverent Hopolite, and as it comes in, makes her 5 Soldier Tokens. Marie then equips the boots onto the Karmic Guide, and swings at me for 2, and then passes. Max draws and mills a land, still keeping that rad counter, which is kind of dangerous for him. He casts an austere command, blowing up all creatures, and then passes to me. I draw and play a swamp. I then recast Greasefang, and I move to combat. I bring back the Knight Paladin, dealing another 4 to Max and Marie, and then crew it up with Greasefang. I swing the Paladin at Marie, taking her out, and in my second main phase, I then cast Oswald Fiddlebender, and then a Chronomancer. I then move to my end step, bouncing the Knight Paladin back to hand. Max draws, and mills from the rad counter, but it's still a land, so he lives yet another turn. He recasts Discana, and then goes to combat, bringing back the Phoenix. I'm about to scoop it up, and then realize the Chronomancer has flying, and I'm able to chump the Phoenix with it. With nothing stopping me from casting the Knight Paladin on my next turn, Max knows when he's beat, and scoops it up. Game review time. This game was 1 hour, 8 minutes, and 16 seconds, and we got to see some brand new commanders, mainly Delny. Delny definitely feels like a very strong EDH card. Even in this game, I would say that Marie was getting very, very average to mediocre returns on them, and I could definitely see them being even more degenerate if Marie's deck wasn't just mono-white. Duskana continues to be a very cool commander in Naya. It's a draw engine, it pumps your creatures, and it allows you to build a very niche style of thing. And for me anyway, that's a lot of green flags for a commander that I'm going to have a lot of fun with. I don't know if we're going to ever see as strong of an example as Felix's Mothman as he did the first game. It just seems like oftentimes people now know what to expect and we remove it as soon as it comes out. Even in the game that I was playing it, Felix would not let me have the commander out for more than half a second. Having made the shift from Shorakai to Greasefang, I was a little bit skeptical that I wouldn't enjoy it as much, but I have to say, it can be a lot of fun. Not having to pay for the cost of a vehicle is just great, and it's sort of like a reanimator deck, so I get to play a lot of fun black cards. Overall, I would strongly recommend, if you have a Shorkai deck, to at least test out Greasefang, because they're a really fun alternative. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, but it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.